So I have been, well, it's really loud. So I have been touting on Facebook and Instagram some new techniques that I've uh, gathered. I guess I've gathered them. I always search for words. But some new techniques that I've incorporated into my LRGB workflow here in Pixinsight. And, Sight. and uh, I want to show them to you here today. And the data that we're going to be using is M81, M82. So let's go over here and grab that. Go over here to open. We're going to our files here in the old Quattro. Look at this. This is dedication. All these different targets I've shot with the 8 inch Newtonian. Craziness. I think I'd have a life. Anyway, let's go into M81. Going there to processing. And here's our red, uh, blue, green, and luminance files. So let's uh, open those up. Let's see what we got. All right, so got our red, and everything is linear. See if I hit F12, it uh, kills the auto stretch. And, uh, you know, I want to kind of speed up. So. Sorry there, Cigar Galaxy. We're, we're going to just work on the Bodes Galaxy today. How about that? Uh, and since we're just going to be focusing on the Bodes Galaxy today, let's just uh, go ahead and open up, uh, go to Processes here. We're going to go to Geometry and Dynamic Crop. And we're going to click on the uh, image here. Actually, I can hit the Reset tool. Let's just drag the box in. A lot of people like to draw a box. I like to drag this box. So, I'm just going to focus in. It kind of helps speed up some of the process here. Processes, processes, pro uh, whatever, in this video. And um, so we're just going to work on this galaxy today. Uh, I like that. I like that box. So I'm going to take this little instance right here. You've seen it before. Drag it off. Put it down here in the little pocket. Put it in the hip pocket. Close the tool. And... We're gonna drag and drop. Pretty easy. There we go. We've got a nice center galaxy. Might rotate it. You wanna rotate it? Let's rotate it. First, let's go ahead and crop them all. Those are luminance. Man, it's like 30 hours of data. Seriously, combined. Like the most I've ever done on this target. So we're just dragging and dropping. Dragging and dropping and cropping. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. And uh, let's see here. Let's come up here to uh, process, all processes. And we're gonna go fast rotation. And let's check 90 degrees counterclockwise and see what we got here on the blue data. Ooh, look at that. What do you think about that? You like that? No, you like it the other way? You like it, you like it back like it was, didn't you? Like that? Okay, let's just leave it alone. All right, so we have a little bit of haze in the background we can get rid of with some uh, dynamic background extraction. So let's uh, set up a template here. Let's go in here, process, uh, background modelization and dynamic background extraction. So we're just gonna click on the image and that links them. So you get these nice little crosshairs here. So they are connected. We're gonna do our sample generation. Uh, let's put the samples per row down to six. Since the image isn't very big. Let's uh, change our tolerance to 1.5. We're gonna start there. Let's bump that smoothing factor up to uh, 0.650. Uh, and let's hit generate. So you see how we've got some fairly small samples. So let's go in here and increase our sample size to 30. Resize all. And you see we're missing a sample here, which means we have to be a little more tolerant. So let's bump that to 1.9 hit generate again still not getting it here I like to start low and just kind of increase these until I get all of my samples let's go to 2.5 there you go last little green one let's zoom in here and let's start scooching these things around definitely don't want to get them on any uh, parts of the galaxy here Sure, and we want to move these off of any bright stars that we see. And I think we've got a little bit of some finer, fainter details of the galaxy. So let's just give this thing some room to breathe. So I'm holding my space bar down and moving my mouse around just to make sure that none of the other samples are on any stars. 
and it looks like we're good. Okay, so we're gonna hit uh, target image correction down here and our target image correction is gonna be division. Yep. So let's hit the check mark. It's gonna create uh, a background model and a new image. Let's hit the nuclear button hound down here for the auto stretch. Ooh, look at that. Look at that, nice and smooth. Okay, let's minimize it. And we've seen it before, we're gonna take the instance, drag all that information off of all these little, of everywhere these little uh, sample points are, their size and their placement is all now stored here so we can close the tool down. And we're gonna close this old blue image up. We're gonna open up our green. Double click on this little instance and you see it uh, puts a sample point exactly where we had them and they're all good. You don't see any red ones. So to, just hit the check mark. It's gonna produce another image. Nice, nice. So blue's done. Process again. Close the old one. Let's open up red. Ooh, red's got a little heavy gradient. Let's see what that does. Oh, look, no red ones there. Everybody's happy. Huh. What do you know? Everybody's happy. If, you, uh, if you're doing that and you see some red sample points, meaning they're not going to factor into the background uh, subtraction, then you want to increase your tolerance until they aren't red anymore, until they're green or gray or whatever color you make them. Let's get rid of that red image. Yeah, look at this. Look how yeah, I had some overcorrecting on my luminance there. So let's double click. Let's see. What? Everybody's happy on this one too? I don't see any red ones. Groovy. See how that flattens out. Pretty good. You can kind of see I've got a little bit of that uh, inner flux nebula in here. But you know, it's about balance. And I could really stretch this thing really hard in the final image and try to try to get some of that into my image kind of hold it back a little bit and typically I hold it back a little bit I just don't like it as blown out as you have to get it to show some of that fainter stuff that's a personal preference all right cool so we've got great looking red blue green data uh, next step is to combine it so we're gonna come over here to LRGB combination reset the tool we're gonna turn off our luminance and we're gonna put these images in their respective color channels. So blue, green to green, and red. And then we're gonna hit uh, apply global. It's gonna create a nonlinear image, obviously that hasn't been stretched. But down here in the screen transfer function, we're gonna leave all the channels linked. We're gonna go ahead and hit the preview and we're gonna get a purple image, all right? It's exactly what we wanted. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to fix that background. So we're going to come up here to process and we're going to go to channel calibration and, or color calibration, excuse me, and background neutralization. And we want to sample our background. So we're going to hit this little icon here that has absolutely nothing in it. And that's going to draw a little sample box for us. It's a pretty big one. So in our target, see where it says reference image here, we want to do this little drop down list. We're going to choose that preview that we just made, all right? And then just drag and drop. Boom. All right, background much better. Let's turn the auto stretch off and redo it. It tends to help. Okay, we got a nice purpley galaxy, which we don't want. Let's create another uh, sample point right here in the center. Let's grab that center core of that galaxy right there. And we're going to come up here to process color calibration, color calibration. Same thing, we're gonna choose our reference point. So this is our white reference, which is preview two. So hit the square. We're gonna select preview two, click okay. We're gonna turn off structure detection. And we're gonna come down here to our background reference and choose that uh, preview one that we made already. And then drag and drop, bam. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. 
All right, so let's go in here to preview and say delete all. There's all our previews deleted. We can hit F12 and restretch it. So I think we're pretty good. But you can tell, and this is part of the, this video, and that's two things that I want to show you that, I, that I've uh, picked up here. One is how to add color to your image. And the next is how to sharpen your target and not really affect your stars or the background. Uh, so right off the bat, if you zoom right in here, I say right off the bat a lot. I was watching one of my videos the other day and I remembered, or I, I saw that I was saying that a lot. I was like, come on, man, seriously. Stop the baseball references. You can see a lot of green in this image. So let's open up, uh, first thing I wanna do is open up process. We're gonna come down here to noise reduction, SCMR. I wanna push it all the way back, but let's push it about 75%, which is amount 0.75. Just gonna drag and drop it and that's just gonna you see how the background just kind of a little purple we just push that green back in the histogram is always you don't really get rid of the green you just move it back in your histogram okay so i like it now now here's something else that i do that i really love now i'm gonna minimize this image push down here this image 13 stretching I am going to automatically stretch that image using script, easy, easy, and easy soft stretch. This thing's amazing. Understood, yeah, you could screw it all up. I know, got it, got it. Okay, let's start select that image in the no view selected, so let's select image 13. So it's gonna give you a preview. There's your preview, I like it. Let's just run it. Boom, <coughs> all right, cool. So here's where we're going to get into our first new process. And that is, we've got a great looking image here, but guess what? We don't have a lot of color. And back in the day, when I used to face this, I was like, boom, I would hit, you know, uh, curve transformation. I would crank the blue and the red. And, and I was doing a lot of stuff to basically manipulate the color. And I want to try to keep this as fundamentally authentic as I can. Uh, so what I want to do is I am going to come in here to image 13. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click this little button that says extract CIL component. So I'm going to extract the luminance out of this color data. Yeah. So here's the luminance. We're going to open up histogram transformation. Open up a real time preview. I'm going to hit this little check mark right here to show my histogram peak. And I'm going to darken the background up just a tad right there. Just a tad. All right. So let's just minimize that image. Push it down here. We're going to open up LRGB combination. We're going to reset the tool. We're going to take that luminance that we created. We're going to move it right up here and put it into the luminance. We're going to turn off our red, green, and blue channels. And watch this saturation slider. When you push it down, it adds sla sla saturation. <laughs> Uh, whatever it adds saturation we move it up it decreases it I know it's weird let's push it down to about 0.3 somewhere there it's gonna add saturation when we apply that luminance back to that image but it I feel like what it's doing is it's really uh, bringing out what's naturally here it's just saturating the color it's not manipulating the color so let's just add it bam and you're gonna find when you do this the more times you add it, the more color you get. So you can see, let's do a before and after. Oh, you know, and you can all also tell that I've darkened up the background. So that may be the biggest striking thing. Let's just add it again. Add it again. Doesn't hurt anything, right? Every time you add it, you're going to start seeing more and more color. Aha. Hey, I wouldn't lie to you. Look. So let's zoom way in here. You can start seeing some of these little HA pockets. And guess what? I have shot HA data for this thing. I'm not even incorporating it. But you can really see it. Let's back it off. Before. After. Let's add it one more time. You start seeing some of these stars pick up some color in here. Ooh. What would you look at that? Get a nice galaxy blue 
you start seeing this central core where you've got more stars and and uh, civilizations, hopefully, starting to pick up. I think I like the color, but I'm going to do one more thing this time. I'm going to say uh, chrominance noise reduction. I'm going to smooth this image out and add one more shot of color to it, leaving that saturation slider set at 0.3. Incrementally, right? Get a little sip of lemonade. And it's raining outside again. Hooray! It's been a month of rain. Freaking A. <clears throat> Look at that. Was I kidding? Or was I not kidding? Huh? That's some serious color. And we've done nothing to manipulate any color. We've just kept adding this luminance layer back. That's almost like too colorful. But guess what? Since I'm going to put a luminous layer over top of it, I'm going to let it ride. Because the purpose of this video is to show you that I got all that color in my image here and didn't use Curves Transformation or anything else. Not one time. Okay, cool. So we're going to leave it all poppy and clickbaity here and we are going to hit the uh, convolution, convol convolution tool. All right. Open up a real-time preview and we're gonna blur it. And why do we blur it? We want a nice smooth image. All right. Cool. Okay. So we got a really nice, <laughs> almost over colorful image here, but who cares? You're getting the point. So let's go back through our easy sweet processes here. So open up our luminance, because we're gonna apply it next. I'm gonna create a preview box. Right like that. Boop. Let's pick that preview box up. Boop. Right there. Okay. Minimize it. Let's come back up here to script. Easy processing suites. Uh, easy decon. And if you don't have the easy processing suites and you didn't see my other video with easy processing suites in it, get it. It's free. Install it for crying out loud. Okay, so here we are. We want to select our luminance DBE. That's the image we want to work on, okay? And the process for decon is the first step. We want to create a new process star mask, and it should go fairly quick because we have a pretty small image here. All right, so we're making a star mask. You see it's basically punched out all our stars. Pop, pop. So let's go back to our Luminance DVE. Let's create a background mask. Cool. Go back to Luminous DBE. Let's uh, click on the deconvolution button here and we're going to generate a PSF. It's going to take an average of all these stars in here. There it is. Very nice. So click that and then let's do this drop down list and we're going to click a preview. And now we can really zoom in and see what's going on here. So I like to start pretty low. And I'm going to start the decon iterations at 20, pixel map iterations at 5, and let's evaluate it. So it's actually not manipulating the data right now. It is just showing you a preview of what it's going to do. All right, it says done here. So let's zoom in. You can see it just started putting some rings around some of these stars. Um, let's see. You can flip back and forth. See that? So I think I may push that down to maybe like 16. Then I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna live dangerously. And there we go. Let's see. I don't see anything funky. Everything looks pretty sharp. Stars look nice and round. Let's minimize our image. Then we get all these little masks left over. I wish they would just delete, but they don't. So we got a clean house here in a minute. All right, so the next uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to script, easy suites, easy denoise. This is awesome. So agree to it, yes. Let's make this bigger. Drop down list. Uh, we're gonna select that image, Loom DBE. Whoa, 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 whoa. Got really big. <laughs> Click that off. Start that over again. Script. 
Easy denoise. Yeah, I understand. Select our image, Luminous DVE. Man, that thing was like huge. It was all, it almost knocked over my lamp. All right, so in the TGB uh, settings here, all this is default. Everything's default. I don't touch anything. I mean, you could bump those iteration down or you could bump them up, but guess what? I don't mess with it. Uh, but for the sake of the video, let's do a, let's do an evaluation, you wanna? So you can see we've got some pretty heavy noise here. There's that little slider, you can see all this noise right here. So let's just run an evaluation on it. Shouldn't take too long. It's gonna create a little mask. It's gonna mask off some of these brighter spots. And judging by the percentage, it's gonna take a very long time, even to evaluate. But that means it's doing something. So be right back in 60%. All right, we're at 99%. And, ooh, look at that. Look how smooth that is. It's like mega smooth. I love it. All right, so if you're happy, run it. <clears throat> all right, so it is finishing up. It's doing all this little whatever. Yeah, I love it. I love, look how smooth that is. It's amazing. It took forever too, by the way. I got a little nap. Anyway, it's worth it. So let's minimize all these white masks. Like seriously, I haven't figured that out at all. What's up with that? I'll put it over here and we got all these things. Let's just highlight them. Yeah. All right, so we got this really awesome, amazing. Let's right click on the preview, delete it. Luminance layer that is linear so we are going to hit f12 we're going to kill that we're going to manually stretch this uh let's move that down here let's open up our histogram transformation reset it when i say manual we're manually stretching this so hit this little circle here for a real-time preview now our histogram is right here at the peak can't see it. Let's move our mid-tone mid -tone slider over. You can see our image getting brighter. Ooh, man, that looks good. So we hit the square to accept it. And then this little button to... It's like we're there, right? Look at that. See? Ooh, man, that, I got heart palpitations. Did you get them? Did you feel that? I got them. Look at that. Look at that. Right here in the backyard, people. Dang. Let's boost that up just a little bit more. Right there. Ah. Uh -huh. Ah. Uh -huh. Now we can bring this black point slider in just a little bit. Right there. I like it. Oh, man, it gave me the shivers. All right, let's turn off the real time preview, and there we are. That is one awesome looking image right okay so we've got a little brightish kind of kind of uh core here you can see that decon it kind of uh a little ring around that star right there but you know what at this distance you can't see it so let's create a little range mask right here and kind of bring that core down if you want to so we're going to use our range so range selection selection god i haven't started drinking yet but i'm gonna uh, hit the real-time preview on this thing. So let's move that lower limit over at the top. Let's get just that core Right on there Like that Is that our fuzzy? So that kind of leaves that centroid part out now We're gonna smooth it. We're gonna really smooth it Right about there And let's accept it <laughs> Okay, and we're gonna take our range mask, put it on top, just like that in the, in the range mask receptacle. Let's move that down, let's do not turn it off. Let's uh, click our little blank icon up here and we're gonna create a preview box. There, let's click into it. So when you've clicked into the preview box, 
whatever you do is, isn't happening to the image, it's a preview, right? Uh, so let's open up HDMR multi-scale transform. Let's push that down to eight. And we're gonna do the uh, functions to lightness and we're gonna create a lightness mask. It's very important that you select those two. Let's just drag it over and see what it does. Ooh, man. Control Alt Z. Look at that. Brings all these little fine little streakies in. And it shows some more rings around them stars, but that's where I would have spent a little more time. Probably bringing those iterations down. Anyway, I like it. Let's back back out of the image here. Now we're going to apply it to the image. <coughs> Man. I might be allergic to that. Let's go back into our preview again and let's open up our local histogram equalization. We're gonna go to 10 bits per channel. We're gonna leave it set. Actually, let's set the default. This is what it comes default at. I always have that kernel radius set at 200. I'm gonna bring that amount way down. Somewhere around 0.3. Let's leave it at eight bits and see. Let's just bring it over and hit. I like to do that after I've done HDMR because it really kind of brightens up some of those areas that HDMR will, uh, look at that. Shit, man, stop it. Straight over to we got. I love this guy. Oh, I think this is one of the galaxies. Little buddy down here is pretty cool too. Sorry I cut him out. A lot of you guys are probably looking for that little hydro, hydro blast out of the core of it, but eh, maybe next time. Anyway, um, before, subtle, delete, and let's minimize it, and the mask, we're going to right click on the image and remove the mask, okay, <laughs> alright, so let's minimize that, and let's open up image 13, nice and colorful, create a, a preview, go into our preview. Let's open up our LAG, LRGB combination, and we're gonna take that luminous that we just did so much work on and put it right here at the top. Actually, I wanna reset the tool, turn off RGB, put it back on, because I don't really wanna introduce any more um, saturation if I can help it. Let's just plop it on here and see what it looks like. Dang, I like it. Probably gonna push some of that green back here in a little bit, but right now, that's pretty awesome. So let's make sure we got our chrominous noise checked back. And uh, let's put it on. I like it. Wow. Wow. Is that wow? Wow, okay. All right, so let's kill the preview. Look at that. Let's go here to SCNR. Let's push that green back one more time. What do you think? Ooh, ooh, yes. I mean, sometimes you just gotta stare. Okay, so part of the reason I'm doing this next video, this next video, part of the reason I'm doing this video that we're in now is sharpening so i want to sharpen up this galaxy and i used to what i used to do was I used to come over here and i would create a luminance remember how we just did all right and i get this luminance and then i would take and put it right back on as a mask boop like that right and then i would apply sharpening but guess what it would apply it to all these stars too and some of the background all right and i don't want that because what happens is all of a sudden my stars start going they, like, they don't blend out very well. Um, so let's take that mask off, remove it. Okay. So we've got our luminance that we just created. This is uh, this is my next little thingy here. We got our luminance. So we're gonna come here to star mask. And I'm gonna leave the large scale set at zero. That's very important because I wanna create a tight mask on here. I don't want it super big. Right, and I'm going to uh, drag and drop, and we're going to create a star mask. 
I am, however, going to increase the size of the stars because they are a little too tight and then blur it a little bit to get a little fade on it. Yes, I am. But it's amazing what happens if you just put that large scale at like one. The star mask is huge and looks like squares. All right, so we got a pretty good looking mask here. I like it. Let's go into morphological transformation. And instead of erosion, we're going to do a drop down list and we're going to choose dilation. It needs to get bigger. Boop, boop. All right. Uh, let's put it on a element of five. A little triangle here. Let's drop it on. See all the stars just got a little bigger. It's good for the mask. And then we're going to open up convolution. Reset the tool. Open up a real-time preview. Just go and blur them. Let's create a little smoothness in there. Okay. So now we have our star mask. Put it right here. And we have our luminance mask that we just made. All right. And we're going to come up here to image. We're going to invert it. What? Yes. We're going to invert it. Push it up here. And we're going to open up pixel math. <clears throat> and make sure that use single expression is checked. Open up our expression editor. Let's edit out this old pixel math expression that we have here. And we're going to double click star mask. Plus. And this is uh, image 13 loom 1. We're going to add those two together. Do a little drop down list here. We're going to create a new image, same as target. And you have to open up one of them for it to work. And then we're going to hit apply. Awesome. Let's minimize that. Let's minimize that old mask. So here's our new mask that we just made, which looks pretty cool. It's like a negative, right? We're going to come here to image and we're going to invert it back. Ooh. So you see basically what it's doing is these little black spots and all these spots in here are now protected. Everything black's protected. And we're gonna apply it to the image, just like that. So the, the centroid of the stars is all protected. The background's protected. What's not protected is the galaxy. So go here, mask, show mask. So now let's do another preview. We'll do one around the bulk of the galaxy here. Let's click into the preview. And let's open up our Unshark mask. Let's really jack on it here. The amount. Let's just apply it. Uh, see, it's, it's starting to get there. Let's push it up a little bit more. Let's really punch this up. Ooh, yeah. You can definitely tell up in here, it's really sharp in these regions up. So I like it. I'm going to apply it. I'm going to get a nice uh, sharp galaxy here. I like it. Let's minimize that. Let's uh, kill the preview and then right click on and remove the mask. Okay. All right. So let's finish this image up. You want to finish it up? You want to hang out with me while we do that? You don't want to go anywhere, right? What else are you doing? So let's open up our curves transformation. Reset the tool. We're gonna give this image some punch. Not like, hey, Kool-Aid punch, but just some punch. All right, so we're gonna we hit our little circle here. We've got uh, real-time preview up. We've got some awesome color, all right? Uh, we got RGB K selected. We're gonna come way down here, right? Watch this, we're gonna pull this down. I'm darken that background up. We're going to come right here to the middle and push it back up. And look at that. Ooh, man, that just separated that galaxy from the background like, like nobody's business. Dig it. All right. So this uh, luminous mass that we created before that was up here, let's come back up here to uh, image. We're going to invert it back. Okay. And we're going to open up histogram transformation again. Reset the tool. Create a real-time preview. 
we want to make that background darker. The darker the background, the more the separation of the mask between your signal and the background, because we want to work on some noise reduction on the background. All right, cool. So let's drag that tab over, put it on that tab, and we've applied the mask. And we're gonna come up here and right click on the image, come down here and mask and say invert mask. And if you wanna see what that looks like, basically everything bright is protected and the background isn't. So mask, show mask. Let's do a preview right here. I click into the preview. You can see even though that D, what that denoise does is it's still, there's some, still some speckling, but guess what? Look at my stars, right? They're not crunchy. I had really crunchy stars. Probably should have brought one of those images in and shown you, but you just gotta take my word for it. It would just be like a very hard edged circle right here instead of nice and smooth. Uh, so we wanna do some noise reduction and the most awesomest tool for noise reduction post for nonlinear noise reduction is the TGV denoise. But it takes a while. Uh, so we wanna click on CI E lab mode. Make sure lightness is checked. Everything here is default. Let's drag it over and drop it. All right, so before and after. Boop, boop. Let's zoom in here for you. Pretty good. Smooth it out. So let's drag and drop on the image. All right. So let's click back into the preview here. Whoa, a little close. This is where it's really going to smooth it out. Hit that chrominance. Leave it at a strength of seven. Everything else is default. And apply it to the preview. Oh man, would you look at would you look at that? We gotta zoom in here. See all that little garbage, all this little speckling right here? Gone. Butter. Butter. <laughs> all right, let's hit that. All this stuff right now is just technique because you're not really gonna see it, but hopefully it helps. I find that the longer it takes for a tool to work, the better it is. Cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's uh, close down this. And I've almost, maybe not even almost, I think I might have, get rid of the oop, mask, remove the mask. Uh, yeah, I mean, here's the thing, people. Watch your color. Watch how much color you add. You know, to me, even the stars, I think, probably have a little too much color in here. You could probably put that star mask back on and maybe desaturate them a little bit. You know, let's try that just for the heck of it. Let's come in here, star mask. Put the star mask on. You're like, no, we like pretty color stars. But maybe not. We'll see. Just bear with me. Um, in the saturation, I created a preview. I'm just gonna pull the saturation down. Yeah, that's that's like -ah! pull it down just a little bit. Less is more. All right. Okay. Uh, amazing image. Amazing image. Uh, with 30 hours of data, it should be Jesus. So yeah. So adding color through the LRGB combination tool. Remember, push that slider down. Like I said, put it in about the uh, 0.3 range and just keep adding it on there. You know, you can jack it all the way down to here and then it's just gonna look crazy. I like to go in subtle steps. And then the as far as uh, masking off your stars and your background to just isolate the galactic signal or your nebulosity, works good for that too. Uh, this is a great little tool. You have to go back and watch it a couple times. Uh, it took me a little while to, to really get it in the old memory banks here. So, you know, we could come up here and, and check our histogram. It looks like we're still kind of far off the left-hand side. So we could probably just bring this in just a little bit right there. Oh, man. Yeah. Awesome. Great looking image. Pretty quick. How long did that take us? It wasn't long. I mean, you know, barring the uh, denoise and stuff that we had to wait for. 
But anyway, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something because this is uh, this is my new workflow for LRGB and also um, for uh, Narrowvan. Works pretty good for that too. No kidding, it really does. Uh, until next time, I'm Steve. This is Entering Into Space and uh, Clear Skies and Clear Minds.